Hi everybody, it's Amy at Crafty Cat. So what we're gonna do today is make a cute little accordion book to go in um, the little dollar store box that I got. And this is like the little Santa Claus one that I showed you guys the other day. Um, one of my subscribers asked me to make one on on video. And I've, I've done one of these before in a little bit different size. Um, I got the idea from Gail Agostinelli originally, and she has videos on these little accordion books. So this isn't my idea, but um, that's what I made for the little box. So I'm going to show you guys how I did it. So um, this one is a little bit different size, I think, than the one that Gail did um, and the one that I did last time. I used, I believe it was a 6 by 12 sheet of paper. Um, to make this portion, I'm going to end up with one that is 11 by five and three eighths, and that's just based on this box. So um, you just, just the size of your box, you just gotta kind of play with it and figure out what size will work depending on the size of the box. But if you can find these little boxes, and I got these at Dollar Tree, and I'm not sure if all Dollar Trees everywhere carry the same box. These ones open like this. I did add a little piece of Velcro. There was nothing there, it was just a flap but it kept doing that and so I put a little piece of velcro on mine um but yeah that's what fits inside of this box is a piece that's 11 by 5 and 3 8 so the first thing we're gonna do because I have a sheet of scrapbook paper and I got that paper from where did I put the pad of paper It's this Midnight Noel, and I'm pretty sure I got that at Hobby Lobby. Yeah, Hobby Lobby. So anyway, that is it. That was last year, so I don't know if they'll have that one. But, you know, any any 12 by 12 sheet of paper will work. It's printed on one side and not on the other, and it's not a super heavy cardstock. So I'm going to fold mine in half and use um, both, you know, full thickness of two sides, if that makes sense. So how y'all doing? Hope you're having a good day. I'm having a good day. It's just bitter cold here and foggy, <laughs> which I know that probably seems weird because I live in Idaho, but we're near a lake. So we get that kind of lake effect, I guess you could call it fog. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, bitter cold. <laughs> it's 39 when I got up this morning. So not really thrilled about that. I mean, I know it's everywhere. It's it's coming, you know what I mean, to those places that get it. But um, other places are obviously going to stay warmer. And many places like Australia are moving into the summer. So, <laughs> yeah. Not here. We're getting frigid. So, anyways, but I don't love... When it gets all foggy because like i've said before i'm a nevada girl and um i'm used to those blue skies and there's a lot of winters here where you don't hardly see the sky for it can be you know a month or more because we get inversions and all those lovely things i mean we did get that in reno when i lived in reno but uh when i where i grew up in the mountains it was usually blue sky every day at some point, and I love that. Other than that, I don't don't really miss Nevada just because um, all the gaming and everything. It's just a different, a whole different world sort of there. I mean, it wasn't so much up in the mountains where I grew up, but in Reno, where I went to college. Okay. I mean, there's nothing wrong with gaming. It's just that that's not really my thing. Okay, so this is a 12 by 12 sheet and I'm cutting it down, but I just wanna make sure hopefully that there aren't bubbles in my paper. And ideally you would leave this to dry before you um, folded it, but obviously because of time constraint, I'm not gonna do that. Oh, but I am gonna cut it down. So it needs to be five and three eighths by 11. 
So we'll do the five and three eighths first, if I can see it with the glare off of my, oh, what am I doing? This way is five and three eighths. Ooh, that was almost a disaster. I'm running out of, I don't think I have any more of this paper. So I don't want to mess it up. Okay. So I cut off my little end where it didn't match up perfectly. And then we're going to go by 11. Okay. And then I need my scoreboard. And I could have cut it on here too, but I prefer that other cutter is all. So we are going to score at starting at three and a half. So the first score is three and a half. So I need to make sure I line this up good. I don't want it off. And it is kind of important that you really pay attention to where you're lining stuff up because it'll affect the fold in the end. Okay, so first score is at three and a half. And you need to score pretty good if you're doing double thickness paper like I am. If you just have one thickness, obviously you don't have to do it as much four and a half. Five and a half. So this is the easy thing is the scoring because they're pretty even, you know, distances, right? Six and a half. Seven and a half. Okay, so started at three and a half, seven and a half is the furthest out, okay? And then I'm just gonna take this piece, flip it over this direction, make sure I get it lined up right. The first score is gonna be at four. And the only reason you're doing that, um, the way I just did it, is to get your hills and valleys for the scoring so that your accordion fold, you know, is right, five. So first score at four, second one at five, six, and the last one's at seven. So seven and a half is as far out as it goes, and three and a half is as far out on the other side. Okay. All right. So that's going to give us our little spine and accordion fold. Did I say, how are you guys doing today? I hope good. <laughs> I think I said that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Apologize if I did not. I think I did because then I started talking about the cold here. Okay, so try to get them real nice, you know, fold on there. And then we're just going to go back the other way, you know, so you're just, you totally doing the accordion thing, the back and forth. And I try to make sure it works best if you make sure those are even so that you don't end up with um, a weird kind of turn in your accordion fold. And what I mean by that is these corners, you know, make sure they're lining up with the paper. And then hopefully you can get all these folds right. Get them nice and burnished. Okay, and then we're going back the other way. And I really want to try to get all of these uh, folds right together if I can to make as flat a spine as possible. So really try to like, because it does affect how the book folds at the end. So it's important. Okay, this one's going to go this way. I really want them to meet up as much as possible. Nice burnish. Okay, it's doing pretty good. Push it a little bit this way more. It's wanting to 
not quite meet up. And there is just that little bit of give in that fold, which is amazing in that score rather, you know, just that little tiny bit of movement in there and it alters the whole direction that your lines go basically. It doesn't seem like it would make that big of a difference, but it really does. So just, you know, just think about it. Think about how it's folding. Don't just whip it together and then, you know, it may not be very good as far as outcome in the end. And obviously you can't get it 100% perfect. I mean, we're humans, right? That's just sort of the way it is when stuff's handmade, but just try to get it as even as you can. You'll just be happier in the end. Okay. So it's gonna come this way. So yep, this is all we're doing is making little accordion folds. And the last one's this way. Nice and burnished and tight. Okay. So now I should pretty much meet up. And if you have a little bit like that, you can trim that off. It's just super hard to get those 100%, but that's pretty flat for, I mean, it, it slopes a tiny bit, but, but not awfully. And we can see if we can get it to meet over here a little bit better, but it's pretty tricky to get it to do that because it just pulls right out from under you again. Okay, so I'm just going to trim that itty bitty bit off. It's not that big of a deal. You can just see it's barely, it's barely anything, but we'll just give it a quick little trim. And voila, I got a little bit of both. <laughs> All right. So now that our edges meet, you can see on the inside, I have little spines that I can glue stuff to and that makes my pages. But first we gotta glue these ones together. So I just take my art glitter glue <clears throat> and I just glue those little, oopsie, parts together. Always gotta get glue on the mat at some point. And obviously it's better if you have a little more time to just let it sit and not mess with it. So you're gluing these together, but your little uh, flaps on the inside are still mobile. You know, they'll still work like pages. I'm just making a mess here with the glue. And you could even put a little clamp on it if you wanted to, which I might do just because I'm opening and closing and doing stuff with it. I don't have my little clips over here, so I'm just going to let that be for a second, and then we'll talk about kind of the inside and what you can what you can put there. You can do things like, um, you probably saw I had the alteration card with the bottom flipped up, so you can do that. You could do um, flash cards if they fit inside of here. I think these ones might be a little too wide. I don't know. Once they're glued, they probably would. You could do stuff like, um, I don't know why I can't ever remember what those things are called. You know, these little cards, you guys know what I'm talking about. You can do those for pages. And then you can also add little things at the bottom like that one. And I would show you guys if I had it, but it's off to its new home. But anyway, so say I put this in here, I can do another little bit down here that flaps open and close like I did on the 
the last one if you saw that video. So those are all, and then you can also obviously just make pages out of scrapbook paper. And I thought for this one, I'd probably use some of, these are from Taylor Made Journals. It's her Christmas wrapping paper, which is fabulous. And so like you can fold those together um, to make little pages and glue those on. So those will work well. But yeah, just anything like that, alteration cards, just tags in general, like I did just use tags and then you can put a pocket on the back of the tag. But maybe we'll go ahead and do one of these because I think it will fit. Let me use this as a, as a, for size. So if I glue this onto here, like that, oh yeah, it's definitely, that'll definitely work. So we'll use that. First thing I'm gonna do is put some, um, whatchamacallit, you, you guys know already, you're probably already guessing this, <laughs> pattern paper, pattern tissue. I guess it doesn't really matter what direction I go. I just want that aged sort of look because I am horrible and I never get around to um, coffee dyeing. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I remember and I'll do like a batch of paper, but I forget to coffee dye other stuff. <sighs> I'm just hopeless, honestly. But I do like this effect anyway, and I like the way it feels, too, on, um, you know, different items. I kind of like that number, but I guess we've got numbers, so we'll just do this part. This is just the, the quick, easy way to age stuff, right? Got a gob of glue there. Okay. And then this side, I'll need another little piece. Let's see, do I have another one? I like to do uh, my cards and not cover them entire, or, you know, not cover them with decorative paper. I like to be able to see the numbers. So that's all personal preference because I know a lot of people cover them entirely. Um, and then you wouldn't have to worry about doing this step. This is just the way I like them. And I don't mind if it's a little wrinkly even. I like it even better. Okay. Get that out of the way. And then we'll trim around that. And you could obviously be smart and let it dry 100%. But I'm just going to go for it. Because a lot of times what I'll do if it's dried all the way is I'll just tear um, the extra off. And then you kind of get that cool effect. But we're on time crunch, right? So we're just going to do it this way. And then you can take a little ink. Ink a dink a do. And you have instant aged card, right? Okay. I like that. And I got those. Um, flashcards at the dollar store so that was handy dandy because sometimes you can't find them at the dollar store or they have like um I'm trying to think of what I want to put I'm thinking maybe a pocket on one side and decorate the other side like if it flaps like that we could decorate this side maybe and then on this side have a pocket with a tag that you could write on because you're not going to get a ton of writing space out of this deal because it's just <laughs> It's just not going to happen. So anyway, I think I want to use um, one of these really cute little penguins. And I'm just going to cut out one of the whole diamond square shapes here. And put that on there. Because he's super cute. And goes well with the snow theme, snowman theme. Not that you have to do that. You can, of course, do it any way you want. But I kind of think of these as being a little more cutesy than some of the other items I might do just because 
the box is so, you know, kind of cutesy. Do I want to up or do I want to what? Do I want to go around? Not really. Maybe I just need to cut around him. Something about that is bothering me. And yeah, sorry, I didn't have this cut out. I just did not think of it until right now. As you do sometimes when you're creating, you think you're going to do it one way and you end up doing it another. All I really knew I was going to do is the accordion book and then I was going to use these papers. That's about as far as I got in my thought process for today. been crazy trying to get everything back in my Etsy shop which makes me sad because I really wanted the website to work but I get it's not for everybody I mean you guys have been awesome totally going over there and everything but uh, yeah okay so that's all glued but I still have my little my little pages and I will put a piece of fabric over that which I forgot to do on the last one but I did do that before I um, sent it out so really you can make the pockets or you know the pages out of anything that will fit basically that's all you're looking for tags or whatever whatever you want okay and then I also did these really cute Christmas words and stuff from um, a jewel design, Jolene. She is super awesome and sweet, so definitely go check her out, and I'll leave a link to these um, on there, on my, in the description box below the video. Sorry, <laughs> that was rough. Uh, what do I want? Let's do greetings. I like the cold outside too, but it's going that way. So I'm going to go ahead and use the greetings. Ugh, me shaky hands. It's always that fine motor that gets me. I'm great until I try to do anything like that. And then I'm just a mess. But yeah, these are super cute. Definitely go over and check Jolene out. She's got some really pretty um, Christmas digis, and this is a digi too, obviously, and things, but yeah, different other things too, not just like words. She's got other stuff that's very nice. What else do I want to put on there? It needs a little something else. Uh, hmm. I just don't want to cover a lot, but I just want a little something else. Pattern paper or... You know what? I'm just going to use a piece of this. That is from my new Digi. Um, and I printed this just on copy paper, so it is a little different on copy paper. Um my Victorian Christmas digital download. I just did something with it yesterday and had a piece left. I don't want to cover a lot, but I just want some a little color, you know what I'm saying? He's going to cover up the berry anyway, huh? Yeah, I guess that print is just too big. So let's use something else. Maybe the red, huh? That would probably work. I know. I took him off the green. <laughs> oh, I'm putting him on the red. Sorry. It's just, it's just how I roll, you know? And I tore it too small, so I can do something like that would work. Yeah, that'd be cute. Let's do that.
so yeah just do these however or whatever way that you want and if you like the flash card covered entirely then of course cover it entirely actually i think i'll turn it this way so we can see more of the snowflakes So yeah, this one will definitely, this um, paper from TaylorMade Journals is great because it's cute and so that's a good, good thing to add to that. And then on the back, I think I'm just going to do a pocket. I just have to figure out what I want to do the pocket out of. Let's see. It's chipboard. Not super crazy about chipboard to be honest. I've never really been a huge fan just because of the bulk of it. Oh, I have these. These are my old posters Christmas. But they aren't they aren't very cutesy, are they? So that doesn't work very great. I wanted the cutesier look to give joy. That one would work good just on its own. See, you could even do something like this, which I think I might do. Just make a pocket, you know, like a tuck pocket. But I'm going to take the little shiny thing off. And I'm gonna round one corner so that hopefully it will sit well with that. Uh, let's do this one. Yes, that works. And that does cover up quite a bit of that, but I think it's okay. And you could put, like, I think I might put a different little something in the hole there. But I just, the shiny is, wasn't working for me. Let's use some baker's twine. But of course, if you like the shininess, then you can leave it. I don't mind the glitter. And in some things, that gold's fine. But since we're doing the cutesy thing. Oh my goodness, the scissors are horrible. And that'll hang out, it could hang out the top of the book if you put the page up high enough, which is fun to have little things hanging out. And these are little two from tags that I think I got at Joanne one year. It's been years though. I had a whole package of them and didn't use them all up. So there they be. But yeah, you can use tags as a whole page. I mean, just, you can use junk mail for the pages. Just, yeah, just have fun with it. Okay. And then you can put just a little card or something in there if you have one that fits. I think this is going to be too, those are too wide because they're about as wide as that. Probably trim that one down enough. <clears throat> Project Life cards. That's what these stinking things are called. I, that is my nemesis. I can never remember the name of those. Do not know why. It's like some weird block that I have or something. So the, these are a great way to like just use some items up that you don't have enough to say do a whole journal with or whatever. And you know, the, the great part about um, junk journaling is that none of it has to match anyway. So, you know, that's awesome. This is just paper that I get at the grocery store. It's just a writing pad, but I like it because it's kind of a, a vanilla type color. So it's great to add for journaling spots. So 
so everything doesn't have to be old. You can obviously use new stuff too. So I'm just going to put that on the back so that you can write on the back. Let me ink it a little. I even like to fold this and ink it where the perforation is. Sticky. Oops. Oh, this paper, I'm telling you. It's great for gluing, but that's about it. It's like the thinnest. It's almost like super thin newspaper or something. It's really weird. I don't know what it's made out of. Well, like I said, these just were in our mailboxes. And then there were extras on top, so I took them in. Using them for glue books. And my sister gave me hers too, so. <laughs> Erasing my glue. I don't know what I'd do without this thing. I got mine at the dollar store, but um, I don't know. I think you can get them on Amazon. They're like goop erasers or something like that. I can't remember what they're called, but. You could probably put in like craft erasers and find them. They're just great for getting the glue goop and stuff off. Or like, you know, your fingerprints when you've got glue and um, ink on your fingers and all that. Okay. It just takes off the goop. So this one can go right in here. I am going to ink this a little because it's a little bit wow. It's a little wow. Because let's round the corners. Use the little round. I got this uh, corner rounder on Amazon. I actually got it as a gift, but I uh, told my mother-in-law which one I wanted. <laughs> Why does it do that sometimes? I don't know. And she was nice enough to get it for me. Okay. That will just tuck in there. And then we have a page. So just like that, you got a page. And then you just go in. And I just do pretty much, I pick a side, like, because this would be the front of the book. Let me figure out which one I want to be the front. Which which one I like better. I'll just do this one. Um, I put it on the front of the flap, but you can also, you know, glue them to the back of the flap. But I, I generally put them on the front of the flap. We'll do this one up here, and then we might be able to fit. Uh, it's pretty skinny down there. Maybe we'll just kind of do it in the middle on that one. Oh, I forgot about the little greetings. I'm going to have to be careful here. Put it too close to the edge. That's one thing you kind of got to think about, and I did not. So that was my oopsie. Try not to cover up my greetings. And try not to um, get it too far the other way either where it's hanging off the book edge. Oh, that was going to be my front, wasn't it? Oh, I'm a dope. Are you guys yelling at me? I could hear you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm such a dope. It needs to go this way, Amy. That's why you're having that problem. Okay, let's take this out so we don't glue it to the... Because it's going to go like that. Then I don't have to worry about the grading because it won't get glued. I want to see the penguin when I open the book. Thank you. I heard you. So that's all you're going to do is just keep trucking along and um, making pages and 
blend them down and I did do little pockets on the front and the back so that's a little extra space that you'll have because these like I said are not huge journaling books obviously they're really more just for fun decoration you know stuff like that you can put little cute tucks and things in them and Okay, did that come out? Oh, I just messed that up. Running my finger along there. Now it really looks aged. Okay. All right. So that's one page down. Let's, let's see. We got time to do like another page or, or so. Oh, you little stinker. Art glitter glue, I'm telling you. It's, I love it, but man, is it a pain in the rump. Okay, so let's do something different now. Let's use the snowman, or do I want the houses? Maybe let's do the snowman. So, let's see. If we... I want, obviously, them going up and down. So maybe we're going to just fold this in half. And I know I don't need a full sheet of paper to do this, but... Okay. We could make a pocket, like a, almost like a bag. So we're going to have to take off quite a bit. I really like this central part here. But either way, somebody's going to get cut. Okay, well, let's figure out how high we want it. This is five and three eighths, so maybe if we cut it at like five. So five is going to be like there. <laughs> Which is not great. Okay, well, I'm just gonna do this. I can't get it the way I want it. And then we can fold some over make the bag itself. And I'm not measuring. I'm just folding some over. It's, it's just a wing in it. Let's see what we get here. So if it was attached... Here, it's probably still going to be too, yeah, it's way too big. So we're going to have to cut some off. So we're probably just going to really get the one snowman. That's what's going to happen. You could, um, if you had this by Lorna, this um, Taylor Made Journals paper, you could print it smaller. That would probably help a bunch. into a flap, get a little bit of it off, I'm just making this up as I go along, sorry, but at least you can kind of see <laughs> what I'm doing, I guess, so I guess on one side I'm going to have the girl and on the other the boy, so I thought it works pretty good, and I, I left that a little bit longer, and I'll that's the part I'll glue to the um, book. <laughs> oh, brain. It can only do so much at once, right? <laughs> Surprise, my smoke detector's not going off. Okay, and then I'm just going to cut these extra bits off. 
off here so it doesn't show at the top of my well actually that one which one's the long one that one okay just basically cutting off anything that's going to add bulk So this definitely needs to get glued down 100% because it's just the flap. And we don't want it in the way of anything. Did I put that really crooked? As it looks. Okay, this. I really don't need this flap right here. So if you cut straight, Amy, why would I do that? Just need this flap right here for the bottom. Okay, and then I'm going to put a thumb notch on that. This is definitely crooked. I get my thumb notcher out. It's buried down here at the bottom. Oh, we probably need it on both sides, huh? So that you know it's a pocket on both sides. So that's okay. And we'll ink a dink a doo. Yeah, that was kind of a waste of a whole piece of paper. I should have cut it in half first. <laughs> I can still use those scraps for something. I ink in here a little. And this isn't super thick, but I don't think, you know, a tag going in and out is going to be that big of a strain on it. for some reason okay so this part I'm going to glue oh, see it's just a pin with a uh, knitting needle over the top or cover over the top all glopped up today right along the edge so that it isn't in the way of the tag going in and out I'm down here though. Okay. Joel's so sad because no kiddos home. She's having a hard time with that. It's going to be really crazy next year when Theron, you know, has moved out to go to college. She's going to be a wreck because at least he does come home at some point in the day and loves on her for a bit. She just loves those kids. It's a hard one for us all. Oh, come on. So the easiest way, really, obviously, is to put the pin in and then put the need knitting needle cover over the top. Okay. So then this can hook onto here, and you could move it up or down or however. I think I'll move it up little more room so I probably could um, put a little strip or something underneath and you don't have to do that you could just do these but it is kind of fun to add the little something down there and you could decorate this up more and then we'll need a tag for that And I don't go all the way into the crease. You just don't really need to do that. It's just going to add bulk and it's just going to make it harder for those to open and close. So there's really no reason. As long as it's not hanging out your outside page there. We 
could put a little word on there. That would be good. Do cold outside and just trim off the edges a little. You could even do this as a strip down here. Hmm. Let me see. I'll have to back it and stuff because it's pretty th thin paper I printed it on. If I put that down there, that would just be kind of fun, wouldn't it? So what I did last time is I, hold on just a second. Okay, so back. Sorry about that. That was my hubby. So I wanted to make sure I answered it. He's having troubles with his CPAP, so I got to go take that in. So as soon as I finish this video, I'm going to run and take that in. So hopefully we can get it fixed because he really can't sleep without it. So what I did was, you want to leave a little space because, and I, you know, these would probably aren't super um, functional. <laughs> it's just more of a fun thing, really. But I took a piece of coffee dyed paper on the one that I did last time in the other little book. And I mean, obviously this is not rocket science or anything. And you could have it flip down too. I just had it flip up so that it wasn't hanging out of the bottom of the book. And fold it to as, as much the same size of, as the little piece of paper. Is that corner hanging out? And clearly this is not going to be a ton of writing space, but I don't know. It's just kind of fun to add these things to journals, even if they're not super useful. Um, they're just fun. It's just a fun little thing. Just put a little quote on there or something. That'd be fun. These are the kind of things that, like, uh, I think kids and grandkids just love. You know, like, looking through something like this when it's all finished up. It's like a something that they'll remember when they're older. Is remember that little book that grandma had that you know whatever? I don't know. I just think that it's just something fun. And it had that little flap that you could open and close. I'm gonna cut part of this off so that I can glue it on without gluing that page on, if you see what I'm saying. And that quote said whatever on it. I don't know. I just think those kind of things are memories and it's just fun. Fun to do. So I'll just put glue where I left a spot. I just know that I loved little things like that. And I know my daughter was the same way. Like she loved any kind of books that had little openings, little pockets, little, you know. So I can just see that that would be kind of just a fun little thing. Okay, and then what are we gonna put in the pocket? I thought about putting, I had a little tag. Oh, you know, I wanted to see if this one fits. I made this last year, this is fabric and I just, cut it, you know, in a triangle and stitched it on. And then I stitched the trunk of the tree and that's another just piece of fabric there. But that one's left over, it somehow didn't get used. And that does fit in there. So I think I'm gonna just put a little, um, some baker's twine. Do I want red? Maybe I'll do green on that one. Where is my green? Okay, honestly, I had them both right here. There it is. I'm like, I know I had them both.
up on my desk, but it's like an avalanche of paper. So, yeah. As I'm sure you can relate, <laughs> this time of the year, it does get just like a bomb and you really can't do anything about it until you get all, you know, the last thing done, basically. And this one got, does kind of go way, well, actually it doesn't go too, well, kind of, but with those, you'll be able to see it. And it's just such a cute tag. So there's that. So I, that's a start, you know, and you've got a couple more pages and, um, places to put pockets and then you can decorate the front. So they're, they're super fun. And I think they're great little like stocking stuffers, or if you just have a friend and you just give each other a little something fun, that would be a great thing. So anyway. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you have a wonderful day and we will chat again tomorrow. Love you guys. Bye.